Refeeding syndrome is a life-threatening metabolic complication caused by the rapid reintroduction of nutrition after a period of malnutrition. It can cause features like nausea, muscle weakness, and even cardiac arrest. Patients are at high risk of developing refeeding syndrome if they have a BMI less than 16, weight loss of greater than 15% of their body weight in the last three months, little or no nutritional intake for the most part of 10 days, and a history of drug or alcohol use. The pathophysiology of refeeding syndrome is well known. In a starved state, circulating insulin levels drop low, and we start to increase gluconeogenesis. Moreover, some key vitamins are depleted, like thiamine, which also is known as B1. If you rapidly feed someone nutrition in this state of malnutrition, blood glucose levels raise dramatically. This triggers a massive insulin spike. When this insulin binds to cells, it causes phosphate, magnesium, and potassium to be driven into those cells from the blood. When the body is replenished, thiamine, which is already low, is required even more than usual. The net overall effect in the blood is a thiamine deficiency, hypophosphatemia, hypomagnesemia, and hypokalemia. The clinical features of refeeding syndrome are just manifestations of these electrolyte imbalances. Thiamine deficiency leads to Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. This is actually two different conditions, each representing a different stage of the disease. Wernicke encephalopathy is an acute syndrome. It presents with the classic triad of mental confusion, ophthalmoplegia, which means weakness of the eye muscles, and ataxia, or a strange or clumsy gait. Korsakoff syndrome refers to a chronic neurological condition. It has the classic triad of psychosis, anterograde and retrograde amnesia, confabulations, which is where you create false memories without the intent to deceive other people. Interestingly, most of the clinical features of the syndrome are actually due to hypophosphatemia. This can cause muscle, neurological, and cardiac issues. Depending on its severity, you can get muscle weakness and rhabdomyolysis, paresthesia and seizures, and arrhythmias, which can be fatal. Hypomagnesemia is actually very common in unwell people generally. It can present with a wide range of non-specific features because it has a role in multiple organ systems. The presence and severity of symptoms don't always correlate with serum magnesium levels. Finally, Hypokalemia often causes weakness and ECG changes. Weakness usually begins in the lower limbs and progresses to the trunks and upper extremity. ECG changes usually show T wave flattening and U waves, which can induce arrhythmias as well. The management of refeeding syndrome revolves around prevention by identifying patients who are high risk and then closely monitoring them for complications. For patients that are high risk, the aim is to slowly start nutritional support and build up to full nutritional requirements over three to seven days. This might start by providing 50% of the estimated energy requirement a day. Other interventions include giving the patient a multivitamin, prescribing thiamine, and supplementing electrolytes to ensure the following requirements are met. Potassium, 2 to 4 millimoles per kilo per day, phosphate 0.3 to 0.6, and magnesium 0.2 millimoles per kilo per day. Monitoring can be done through vital signs and ECGs to check for arrhythmias, blood glucose concentrations can be performed 6 hourly until stable, and bloods including UECs and CMPs until they're also stable. You really need to find a way to remember the electrolyte imbalances to remember the issues caused by refeeding syndrome. I remember big massive PP. This is a dirty way to recall that you get low BMPP or B1 slash thiamine, magnesium, phosphate, and potassium. Thanks for watching Townsend Teachings. Please subscribe and hit the notification button. Bye.